I'm Linda Greer, and I direct the health program at NRDC. There are 80,000 chemicals in commerce, 60,000 of which were grandfathered in when the law was passed way back in 1976, and nobody ever took another look at them. And believe it or not, of the 80,000, EPA has taken action on only four. And so what that means is that the vast, vast majority of chemicals have not been adequately reviewed for their safety. You'd be shocked where the chemicals are. You know, you might think certain cleaning products might be hazardous, um, which is correct. There are certain hazardous ingredients in cleaning products, but you would probably never think that there would be something hazardous in your shampoo or your cream rinse. But because of this lack of review by the government for safety, because they're so far behind the eight ball on this, really, um, it's, it's, um, it's just a, it's a Russian roulette, whether or not what you're pouring onto your body or into your kids has some of these toxic ingredients. There are a number of very serious diseases that are on the rise that are linked to environmental and product exposures. So the first things that jump to mind for us are uh, cancer, neurological problems, asthma, and reproductive hazards. All of those are diseases that are on the upswing, and all of those are diseases that have links to environmental exposures. What we're looking for is that the industry that manufactures the chemical needs to prove that that chemical is safe for human health and the environment. It's actually very simple in concept. They need to do a basic data set, they need to do basic testing, provide that information to the government, and let the government do the analysis to make sure that safety is there. Where we're really lagging actually is in this basic statute about controlling toxic substances because that is the only environmental statute that has never been reviewed and reauthorized. It was passed in 1976 and we haven't touched it since then. All the rest of our environmental statutes have been updated over time to review both the new science that's available and also the new policy tricks that might be able to limit exposures.